Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I explain how to use automation blocks for Premiere Pro to set the label colors of your project items according to your needs 100% automatically. Automation blocks comes with some ready to use tools which change the label color by type. So for all kinds of items in your project you can pick the color you want to have and either only for the selected ones or for all items in your project it updates the label colors according to your preferences fully automatically and there's also one where you can change the label color of used clips only. If you want to know more about those tools just select the tool and click on help to see a tutorial about it. But today I want to show you how to create custom tools which implement exactly the rules you want to have for setting your label colors like set in a particular folder the color of only the project items in this folder or let's say only for Adobe stock items so items which have a particular thing in their name or that are contained in a particular folder of your hard drive for example. All these kinds of things you can do with automation blocks and you can write custom scripts to do this exactly the way you want such that you've got one do my label color rules tool run it and then everything updates however you want. How is this working? We go here to the script panel of automation blocks and create a new script. And now well, the one thing we want to do this time is changing project items and we want to set an attribute of these items, set attribute of project item, that's this block here. And we don't want to set the alpha usage but the color label. And now you need to tell from which project item do you want to set the color label. You could select here one project item for example and click here on this refresh button and now it inserts here the text in the bin auto reframe sequences the clip ASC 101H1. Yeah, that's in auto reframe sequences this entry here should be violet and if you run this you can see that the label color updates. Now what if you want to set the label color of everything in a particular folder right then we need to loop over all entries in this folder so we go to project items again and use this for each. The green blocks are always looping blocks. And this one says for each item as my item in bin and sub bins of empty. This means um, it sounds complicated at first but it just says every item in the project. And by default it's only for selected items. So we uncheck this. We want to process all items. And we only want to have the ones in a particular folder in this folder. So we select this folder and click here on refresh so it inserts the name here. So it says now for each item in the bin or sub bins of auto reframe sequences, everything inside here, not only the selected ones but all of them and now we can also filter by type. No matter what you have inside here, here we just have sequences but currently it would set the label color for all kinds of things in this bin. Yeah? And we want to set the attribute label color. Now not of this particular clip that we've set before, this was this one here, right? We don't want to set it of this one, but of all these entries that we loop over here. So, and this is my item. For each item as my item. The one thing you need to understand with these loop blocks is if it says for each item as my item, here in variables you now find such a placeholder my item and just put it here. So instead of this particular project item we want to set the label color of all the items we loop over. If we run this now you can see all of them become violet here. And if we set this to Caribbean and run again all of them are Caribbean. Maybe let's set instead the label color of footage. So we click here on refresh with the footage been selected. Now everything in this folder is labeled in Caribbean. Now if we say well we only want to do this for uh, footage but not for sequences for example and not for multicom sequences for none of this just footage and this one should be iris. We run it you can see now everything became iris except this here because this is not footage it's actually a sequence I don't know why I have it in my footage folder and also this one not because this is actually a bin. Yeah? And now you can combine more of those rules. So if you say my footage in the footage folder should be iris and then you can right click here and duplicate put it below and say like everything in my entire project so I remove this here uh, but not footage but bins for example let's say we want to set here now the label color of all bins now here we set now 
footage in the footage folder to iris and now bins wherever they are should have the label color blue for example if you run this script you can see that all bins in the entire project become blue so like this you can filter now more and more add more rules for all the different kinds of stuff you want to be colored in your project and now let's say you're in particular interested in stock footage from adobe stock and all of this should be colored in a particular color so what we do for this is we duplicate our block again to add a, s a third rule and maybe to make the script here a bit more compact to read i can go on the blocks I don't work anymore more on and click on collapse which makes them a bit more compact and now for my third rule I want to implement here I want to say for all items in all kinds of bins no, no matter where they are yeah and also not just selected but all items of type footage I want to make them forest for example but now I do not want to do this on all footage items but only on the ones which have Adobe stock in their name so therefore we need to add an additional logic condition we need to say if something is the case only then we want to set the color label of this particular item to forest and what is this condition well we need to search in the project item name for adobe stock and see if we can find it there so we need to first retrieve the actual name of this item so project items we go to get attribute because this can get us all kinds of uh, things extended type is also very useful by the way so this extended type is exactly the thing you can filter here for but we are interested in the name of it which is here and now we are interested in the name of the project item that we are currently processing which is my item yeah the one from our loop the item we are looping over we duplicate it and plug it here this gives us a name and now we need to construct something like find the name let's find in this name the string adobe stock for example so we go to text because we want to manipulate manipulate text and we have here a block um, in text find first occurrence of something yeah so we want to find not in the variable text here but we want to find in the name of the project item the first occurrence of the text Adobe stock let's just actually copy it from here to make sure we don't have any typo now what is this block creating this is looking in the name for the text and if it finds it right at the beginning of the text like here it finds Adobe stock at the first position of the text so this will return one and if it has like five letters before the text Adobe stock starts then it will return six to say at position six the text Adobe stock starts and if it cannot find Adobe stock at all it will return zero yeah if you wonder why I know this you can always right click on this block and click help and this opens the documentation of the find in text block and this says this block searches for the occurrence of the text inside another text if it finds the text it returns the position where it was found if the hit already starts at the very first letter it returns one for example if it does not find the word it returns zero so this means we want to know if it's not zero yeah so we go to logic and say does not equal math zero this thing should not equal zero if this does not equal zero then this text adobe stock has been found okay so let's check how this is working well let's explain it again we loop over all items all footage items in the entire project and then we check for their name and in their name we l search for the first occurrence of the text adobe stock and if this returns a position not equal to zero then it means we found it we found it at position one at position 10 wherever we don't care but it found the text in the name so if we now run it you can see all the adobe stock footage items became green and all other didn't yeah so now let's show you another variant that would be not looking at the name of the item but looking at the actual footage file
because on my hard drive, for example, I've got all my Adobe stock footage in this folder. So in users, ML, documents, stock, material, Adobe stock. And wouldn't it be cool if no matter how it's named here, because if I now rename this here in changed Adobe file, for example, and now all Adobe files should be Mango, and we run the tool, you can see they all became Mango, except this one is also an Adobe stock file, but we changed the name. So Adobe stock, the text is not found in the name anymore. Wouldn't it be cool if instead we would look at the footage file from this item and say, if it's contained in the Adobe stock folder, then it should be labeled with a particular color. Yeah. So we set the attribute color label of the project item to Mango, if not the name contains something, but if the media pass, so the media pass is exactly um, the file pass of this file on disk. Yeah. So for example, for this file, the media pass is user slash a mole slash document slash stock materials stack slash Adobe stock slash videos slash Adobe stock 72 blah, blah, blah. And if we want to know, is this file pass actually contained in the folder Adobe Stock, then what we actually want to ask is, well, does this uh, pass start with users and mole documents stock material Adobe Stock? So no matter what comes after that, every file pass that starts with this is contained in this Adobe Stock folder, right? So we can say we get the attribute media pass of the item and we search for the first occurrence of the text and now here we need to put the pass of this folder. And either you can copy and paste and or type the pass here manually or there's an even more convenient way to do this. Namely we go here to the file section and just get this folder picker here. And now we can click on this folder icon and then choose the Adobe stock folder and now it inserts the pass that we looked for exactly here. And if it finds this pass in our media pass, then we will label it Mango. And if you want to be very accurate, you want to say, okay, maybe we do not just want to say it should find this at all, but it should start with this, right? And starting with this would, would mean the first match, the first occurrence of this text would be at position one. So we can say here, is equal to one. This means please check if the media pass of the project item starts with this pass. Starts with yeah the index where it is found is the first position. And let's check if this time it's working. Again, last time we said all Adobe stock entries have been labeled properly except this one because we renamed it. If we run it again, you can see this one also becomes Mango because now it's looking at the actual footage file pass and not at the name of the project item, however you want it. Let me show you a last example how you could filter your rules to make them even more specific. And for this, let me quickly reveal here the metadata, the video usage and audio usage, because now we want to label certain elements only if their audio or video is used at most one time. Okay, so we could say we do another logic condition here after that and say first we label all elements from Adobe Stock with Mango and now we want to only label certain elements that are used with a different color. So all footage items that are used should have a different color. And for this we want to retrieve from the project item the attribute video usage of the item and the other thing we are interested in is the audio usage of the item. And now we are interested if any of them is on not zero, right? If it's, this is this number, this ad entry is used three times, so it has an audio usage of three. Other entries which have not been used at all have a video or audio usage of zero. So we want to know logic if this is equal, to if this is greater than zero, this means video has been used or if audio is greater than zero. Yeah? And now if either this or this is the case, so we go to a logic and get here an and or block. We say if either the one or the other is the case, either the audio of the item has been used or the video of the item has been used, then we want to again set a particular label color. So. We set the label color in this case to lavender, for example. And if we now run the tool, you can see 
that these here have been become lavender because their audio usage has been 3 and this one has also become lavender because its video usage is 3. And now you can also nest these conditions if you want. So for example, if this rule should not apply to all used footage elements, but only to the ones that are also Adobe stock images, uh, Adobe stock footage, you can just plug it in here. So this means set for all Adobe stock footage elements, everything in the Adobe stock folder, the color label to mango. But if you then use notice, oh, this one has also been used, set its color to lavender. Now it's only for the Adobe stock elements, right? If you put it behind it here, it's happening for all used elements. So you can see you can get very detailed and customize this exactly as you want and once you've set up such a script you just save it as fix my label colors for example. And now in your library, in your user library, you find your fix my label colors tool which you can always run and which then fixes all label colors in your entire project according to exactly the rules you specified. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just one of many, many things Automation Blocks can do for you and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.